This is the Mercedes Lucky Benedict Show, and I am your host, Mercedes. How is everyone doing tonight? We are so excited that everyone is here listening, and I have a wonderful guest with us tonight. We did have Mary Ducina that was going to be on with us tonight, but she is going to be coming on with us next Monday, so June 12th. For those of you that might have seen that Mary was going to be on for tonight, she had to reschedule. And so, we'll, like I said, we'll have her on for next Monday. Tonight, I have my husband, the artist extraordinaire, Joseph Lee Benedict, which I call him Joe. So we've got Joe Benedict here with us tonight, and he's been on with us before and always have a great time with Joe. So Joe, say hi to everyone. Hello everybody, this is Joe. <laughs> now the last time, Joe, I think you were on was in December. And uh, so it's been quite a while. It's, you know, you were going to be on for one show, but we changed that. So you haven't been here since December. And um, that was the show that you were doing for the uh, Tucson Botanical Gardens. So if anyone wants to go back and listen to that show. You can uh, find him on the podcast here under Joe Benedict and re-listen to that show. So it's been six months since the Tucson Botanical Garden Extraordinaire art show that you did. Could you talk a little bit about what you did for that show? It was huge. Well, the actual art show itself was, uh, or actually it was their holiday light show. I did 35 separate pieces for them. Um, featured artist for the uh, the botanical garden show that for for that show uh, there were 10 separate um, I calling them pencil uh, cypress pencil light trees and they are 15 feet tall you stretch the Christmas lights nice and tight down around the skirt and it gives you this really cool looking uh, tree form so there was 10 of those uh shooting stars i ended up doing 24 of those shooting stars that were just amazing they hung those things 30 feet up in these big cypress trees with lights all over them and they just magical and then the final piece was kind of uh they they gave me artistic freedom on on that and that was the luminary lighting tree and that just turned out very amazing too. It had, let's see, if I remember correctly, 43 separate hearts on it. There were 40 arms that were can articulate and go into almost any configuration that you wanted. And they would hold the luminarque sacks, which is uh, it's a Spanish light that they they put a candle inside and it illuminates the the the, 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 the light. So anyway, that was a lot of fun. I had an absolute ball building it, and uh, it was a huge success. It was, and it was so fun too. And uh, when we went out there, you can also find a video on uh, YouTube with it. But when we went out there, um, Joe and I are, you know, like it's like the it's the opening night gala thing, and we're all looking at we're looking at um, I'm seeing his name on this the big red sign with you know all the people involved and he starts to look down at the bottom of the sign <laughs> and i'm like no joe it looks up look up and it was the top and so he was the top artist of you know on the top of the sign so it was very neat <laughs> yeah it was a lot of fun so yeah. it was a lot of fun so that's one of the things that you're um planning on you know going and doing uh that's what you want to kind of do into the, another, the next level of your art life can you talk a little bit about what you'd like to see happen well one of the opportunities that have arisen through the botanical gardens is to do shows for the botanical gardens they they book uh four or five shows each one of these in each city books these shows every year for three months and uh, I have an opportunity to do some very fun uh, I'm calling it interactive kinetic art art Is that correct yeah. yes anyway yeah uh, uh, you'll be able to uh, manipulate and touch and move and, and and feel these art pieces and in the meantime you'll be spinning um, oh, uh, these 
cool kinetic uh, sculptures and lots of movement and, and visual and all, all that. Anyway, I'm, I'm working towards building some of those and um, very excited about the, the future with doing these uh, botanical garden shows. And the, the neat thing is, is um, it'll it'll be something that you know he can he and I can travel to, you, which will be fun. And some of the things that he's even talking about are actually using um, you know things like materials that we could create things out of that are things that you know. Could you explain? Yeah, that? I'll, I'll take over from there. Yeah. Uh, one of the there's three shows that I, I'm thinking are working towards. And one is actually using recycled plastics. And uh, I would uh, uh, get these recycled plastics and make a, for example, uh, do a zebra, uh, full scale zebra out of these rice recycled plastics. You can come in on top of that with recycled colored glass. So I have white and black glass and literally glue all these white and black pieces to make zebra stripes and such. So that's one of the three shows that I'm working on developing. So again, this is all in the developmental stage. Uh, lots lots more to do to get this uh, these shows uh, developed and, and on the road. So It's going to be so exciting. And, um, of course, you can always go to Joe's website, which is cavemanfabrications.com, and you can find all of his art there and um, communicate with him, buy things, whatever you'd like. There is something really cool that you recently made that is doing well. The customers are absolutely loving it. And it's this amazing um, chair. It's an egg chair. Would you talk a little bit about that? Because everybody's just loving that. So I got uh, commissioned to do an egg chair, and again, with me being this eccentric artist, ha, 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 that I took it to the next level. I'm calling it uh, the um, dancing heart chair. So with half inch thick, four inch wide flat bar, I bend it in a big heart shape and fabricated this very cool heart shaped chair it's all you know designed like an egg chair but uh this this guy flexes when you sit in it it does bounce it, it it has an articulating a spin in it you can sit in there with your legs folded and spin this thing with this uh wheel that you have above your head uh anyway i was really surprised uh i was doing the install and my client came up to me and said joe I will feel like a little piglet. I'm sitting in this thing, and everybody else wants to sit in this same chair. So we better do another one. So she commissioned me just yesterday to build a brand new, a second egg chair for her, and I'm very excited about that. And you just put the other one in Yeah, the week. other one was just up there for a few days. And uh, so she, you know, one of my favorite clients of all time. I've done a ton of work for her. Uh, the galleries that I sell to on a regular basis are very interested in this uh, dancing heart egg chair. So. And so you have a whole line of furniture, which is, um, you have stone furniture. So everything you mix is out of, of stone, and there's the mama chair, the papa, the, you know, all the different uh, sizes of chairs. And you can find all of those on the website. Um, again, it's uh, cavemanfabrications.com. So on, but this particular chair, it, it's huge actually. Like by the time you, I mean, it's like how tall is it? Uh, the the heart that supports the egg chair uh, radius is out at the top and right at eight feet. Uh, and That's then, big. Yeah, it kind of comes down to a point. It's not just a flat heart. I did it on an, uh, an angle so it comes together. Uh, with a point and that's where I suspended the other heart shaped chair from. So uh, it's it's eight foot tall, it's about six, six and a half foot wide, uh, has a, a, a four foot round heart at the very bottom uh, out of quarter inch plate as the base and it's all uh, set on that. So again, 
my client was just blown away. I had so much fun developing it and building it. Um, again, it's something I get to build several more of. Uh, both my local clients, uh, excuse me, both the local galleries are very excited about me developing and building some for them. So. And that's going to be so fun. Yeah. Well, th thank you for talking to me a lot about the art. I, I really wanted to share some of your new things and your new projects. Um, but I also would like to talk um, about some of the things that you and I are doing together, which is creating this documentary film about the property that we live on and uh, the surrounding areas and the history and the the documentary is called Shadows of the Desert. So again, you can find out lots of uh, information on my YouTube channel. Um, not so much on, on, on Joe's website at all about this, <laughs> but last week, uh, Joe and I, I think it, it might've been two weeks now, uh, two weeks ago, we had the pleasure and I made sure I took Joe with me um, because we got to interview and um, film the, the mayor of Marana, who's named Ed Honey. And this man ha is so awesome. And, you know, we really didn't know. I I'd only talked to him on the phone, but so Joe and I got to sit down with him and the crew got to sit down with him and we filmed him. And Joe, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that experience? Because it was pretty funny. It was pretty neat. So uh, Ed Honey has been a Marana resident his whole entire life. And he's in his 70s now. Uh, very charismatic, very passionate about everything that he's doing uh, for this amazing little city we live in. Uh, uh, yeah, and he's been here. Like he's he was born and raised here, except for two places, right? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, he he served in Vietnam. Uh, he was a CB uh, for in, in the Navy. Anyway, uh, I asked him about that, and he he laughs. Says, "Yes, I've been two foreign countries." California and Vietnam and uh, we we got a big kick out of that so he's very charismatic and he was a lot of fun to talk to had a lot of information about the growth and, and how Marana is being planned and, and, and growing and um, just evolving into this great community we, we love Marana yeah, it's really, I mean, it was really neat. It was like, it was almost like, uh, I don't know. I don't think I've ever, 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 ever met a mayor of a community, a real one, a real mayor that wasn't in a, you know, a movie or something that actually seemed like a real decent human being and, you know, an honest human and that really cared about the community. I, I felt he really is just, he reminded me of like the Andy Griffith show and how he feels about, you know, with Mayberry. And so I was really, really thankful that we got to take that opportunity to meet him. And it's, it's kind of interesting though, when you think about it, how when Joe and I, how this whole thing is evolved is because of the haunted property and all the tragic and struggle and, and trauma and being on the dead files together in 19, uh, 1920, <laughs> 1920 and 2020.